Hi, I'm Ellen with Bell Farm, and today is March 20th, and it's a really nice warm day here in central Iowa. It's about 65 degrees. So today we're coming out and we're gonna do our first spring inspections of our hives. And so I just wanna walk through and kind of show you guys what I look for um, for our first like post winter hive inspections. We know that this hive is alive and doing well. Um, we can see that some of the foragers coming in the entrance are carrying in pollen. So that's always a good sign. Means that hopefully they've got some brood in there that they're raising. So at this point in the year, all of our hives still have emergency sugar up on top of them, which I'll show you. This medium box that's on the top here really just serves as kind of a shim to surround that, that winter sugar. And you can see that this hive really hasn't eaten any of it, which is, it's a good sign. We like it when our hives don't need the emergency feed, um, but we always leave it on there just in case. So we'll have to take this off in order to do our inspection. We'll just set that in there. All right. So the main things that we're looking for coming out of winter, we want to definitely be sure that our hive is queen right. So that's the first thing that we're going to be um, looking for is the presence of eggs and, and brood. When we inspect a hive, we always start by pulling a frame from the outer edge. It's less likely that the queen is going to be there. So that minimizes the risk that we might roll her between a couple of frames. And by removing one frame at the outer edge, it gives us a little bit of um, working room so we can kind of shift our frames here. These first couple frames that I'm seeing here on the outside edge, these are completely filled with honey. So lots and lots of honey here. This may be one of the reasons why um, this colony hasn't been eating any of their emergency sugar. They obviously still have plenty of food stores in the colony. So when you open up the hive and you just kind of look down in between the frames like this, it really gives you kind of a quick picture of how many bees you have in the colony, like an idea of the amount of bee coverage that you have in there. This hive looks really good. So looking from the top deep, we can see that we've got lots and lots of frames that have good solid bee coverage, lots and lots of bees in between these frames. So that's a really good sign. It means we have a good, healthy, um, good sized colony in here at least. So what we're gonna be doing here is just pulling individual frames. And the first thing that I'm looking for is the presence of eggs. I wanna see that our queen is in here and that she's laying eggs. And so if we can find some eggs, that answers that question for us right away. All right, so now we're getting into some brood. So if you take a look at this frame, I'm gonna kind of lean it here so that you guys can see what I'm seeing. So these are some capped cells. And then if you look even closer, you can see that there's also some cells in here that have larva and also some eggs in there. So at this point, we don't even need to hunt any farther for our queen. We know that we have a queen in here, that this colony is queen right. That's the first and most important thing that I look for when bees are coming out of winter is to ensure that we do have, you know, the presence of a queen and that there is brood in there. So. We're good to go in, in that department. The other thing that I'm looking at here, and I'm gonna see if I can shake a few of these bees off so you guys can get a better view of this. But I like to get a feel for how well fed the larvae are. That tells me if the colony needs food or not. And if you look down inside the cells in this frame, I don't know if you guys can see that, but those larvae are floating in a really nice pool of royal jelly. So what that tells me is that the, the hive is doing okay in terms of nutrition. They obviously have enough food that those nurse bees um, are able to give lots of brood food to the larva. And that's one of the things that we're looking for for a good sign of health coming out of winter. So we're gonna go a few more frames here. Just keep checking to be sure everything you know, is looking okay. We're just kind of getting a feel for you know, how this colony is doing in terms of brooding up, this is just beautiful. So we're really happy to see, you know, a frame like that. Nice, solid, um, capped brood. Obviously our queen's in here and she's, she's working, she's doing her job. So this is what we like to see coming out of winter. And it even looks, I'm gonna shake some bees off here so you guys can take a look at this. It even looks on this frame like they are beginning to raise some drones, which is amazing. It's pretty early yet, but down here at the bottom, these are drone larvae. So as a queen rearer, that's one of the first things that we start looking for in the spring is to see when they begin 
um, raising drones. It gives us some, some clues as to when it's safe for us to start raising queens. We want to be sure that there's lots of um, mature drones available in the area before we actually start grafting queens for the year. So we've kind of got the hive broken apart here into the two boxes so we can comb through and look for our queen. Um, you don't necessarily have to find your queen, particularly if you've already seen eggs and brood. Um, I like to keep all my queens marked and sometimes I find that at the end of winter, sometimes those bees have um, cleaned her paint dot off of her. So I just kind of wanted to wanted to look through here and see if we can find her. And uh, we did find her on this frame. So let me just spot her and we'll show you. Yeah, she's right here and she does still have her, she does still have her mark. So we don't need to remark her, but that's one nice thing just to check in the spring, be sure that that mark is still on there. So great. So what we're gonna do um, to finish up our inspection on this colony, we're gonna take a mite count just to get a feel for um, where they're at in terms of varroa load. And then that informs our decision about whether or not we treat this spring and what product we treat with. So now that we've found our queen and we know that she's in this box, I feel good about going ahead and taking a mite count. We'll take a mite count from some frames that obviously the queen is not on. So we always wanna take our count from a couple frames of open brood. Um, the reason for that is because we want to be sure that we're testing nurse bees. The nurse bees are the ones that are most likely to have mites riding around on them. So it's also good just from a sampling standpoint to take your sample from a couple frames if possible. So I'm just gonna find two frames of open brood here. We're gonna go ahead and do our, do our mite count. I think we're gonna use this one and this one. And so for the mite count, I know I've, I've done a video on this, but I'll just kind of run you through real quick. We use this tool, this Varroa Easy Check. We're gonna fill it up with some, uh, some rubbing alcohol. This is just isopropyl rubbing alcohol. We fill it about to the bottom of the strainer in here. And we need a half a cup of bees to take our mite count. So that's approximately um, 300. And so what we're gonna do is shake our bees into this plastic wash tub here. Don't worry too much about, you know, the bees that fly away when you shake them in there. Typically, um, the nurse bees, which are the ones we want to sample, are not real prone to flight. And so any bees that do fly out of there are probably not the nurse bees. Those aren't the ones we want to sample anyway, so we're not gonna worry about them. So we got lots of bees here in our tub. Just kind of shake them down to the corner, get ourselves a half cup scoop, level it out a little, pour them in there. Now this process does unfortunately kill the 300 bees that we're sampling. I'm gonna put our extra bees back in here. But you know, in a colony like this that probably has at least 30,000 bees in it, this is a very, very small sample. I think it's really important for beekeepers to remember the reason that we do this so that we can keep our hives alive. So a lot better that, you know, we sacrifice 300 to take this sample for the good of the entire colony, as opposed to not sampling, not checking, and then potentially losing the entire hive to mites. So we agitate these a lot, shake, shake, shake. Um, I usually tell beekeepers when you're done shaking, you should see stingers or bee legs or bee wings floating in the water. If you don't see stingers and things floating, then you probably didn't shake hard enough. So shake, shake, shake. All right. And then you can technically hold this up and look up in the bottom to get your mite count. I kind of find it that it's a little easier if I strain it. So I use a little, a little mason jar and a tiny little strainer. That kind of works better for me. So I'm gonna tap these bees off of here, kind of get the liquid off of them. I'll set my strainer in the lid. And then I'm gonna pour this liquid through here. All right. And we do have lots of stingers in there, so I know I shook hard enough. We'll kind of see if we can get a count here of what's... All right, so the majority of what we have here is stingers, but I am seeing one mite. So looks like we've got one mite in this count. Um, and 
you know, even though it's, it's only one, it's early spring, Varroa ramps up really, really fast. So with a count of one, these bees are definitely gonna get treated this spring. But that is about it. Um, most important thing too, you know, when you are inspecting in the early spring, make sure that you pick a nice warm day to do this. Like I said, it's about 65 out here right now. I would not pull frames of brood if it were below 60. Um, it's really easy to chill brood in the early spring. And, you know, you certainly don't want to do that with a colony like this. So I hope that that information is helpful. And I encourage everybody to get out and check your bees.